Okay, so we're uh where I am going to start doing patch rundowns every, every time there's a kind of large patch because maybe people will be interested in this. You let me know if you want me to keep doing this kind of stuff because I don't know. Maybe some of you value my opinion. Alright. So getting right into it. Uh not quite sure why they nerfed Blitzcrank. I don't think he's that strong. I don't see a lot of Blitzcrank dominance in my ELO. Um I could be wrong for lower ELOs. Uh I don't really see it in a lot of my friends who are low ELO games either. Uh I don't think this is going to ruin Blitz. Like I guess the ult is, you know, quicker late game, but not that that's a big deal. Um the auto, the biggest change here, I think, is the auto attack reset. So you can't just like, I don't think you can just hook and like insta e anymore. Um, can no longer be canceled. Um, actually, it might not have anything to do with the auto attack reset. I think it's if you, if you start throwing it out, it'll always hit. So I'm not exactly sure. There, it's kind of unclear on what this change is. Uh, the Q is a little nerf. Um, ult is just a change. Blitzcrank's still gonna be Blitzcrank. Lulu change, this is a big one. Um, especially since I play a lot of Lulu. Um, base mana up by 60, that's a pretty big deal, especially for lane Lulu and in support Lulu too. Uh, can, that's a whole extra Q and during that entire time, you're going to be mana regening with either your support item or uh, Doran's ring. You can, you know, hold more mana now. That's pretty big. Base movement speed, that hardly matters. Five is, it's just meh. The big change is to Glitterlance. Um, so, I think lane Lulu will still be viable as long as you can clear a wave with two Qs. Because right now, it takes two Qs to clear an entire wave. So if it's still two and not three, then lane Lulu will still be fine. And uh, the increase on slow at all durations, two seconds is pretty big, especially for level one. This will make it so if you hit a Q uh, early on, you'll be able to punish it more with auto attacks. Um, the attack speed bonus on W is meh change. I mean, I guess it kind of helps support Lulu and AD carries more. It also increases your attack speed, which makes it so it's better to use it on yourself Sometimes in polymorphing the enemy, uh, you can get in more auto attacks. Uh, I'd say Lulu's probably going to be around the same. She's going to be a lot better support, and she's either going to be no longer a solo laner, or she's just going to be about the same as before. Um, but definitely her support is buffed. I'd say this change most likely puts her more towards support instead of solo lane. Tom Kinch, another champion I've been playing a lot recently. Um, this is some. This has got a lot of changes too. So, I personally liked the bonus on his ult because it was consistent damage, and instead of on his uh, uh, passive. Or hold on, let me rephrase this. So, the thing about having the extra percentage on his ult and not his passive is it will constantly be applying extra damage on every auto attack and every ability you do when it's on his ult. But with the new passive, to get maxima effect of it, you have to build up stacks. But with re with before, like, in p the past, Tom Kinch has gotten nerfs on his passive, which, you know, uh, the acquired taste is, uh, it, it lasts not as long. So with that nerf on it, I think they need to buff that again if this is going to be good. Because um, you don't really stack very often. Um, so you won't be able to get the maximum efficiency of your passive. You're not going to be able to do that, especially at level 16. How often are you going to be hitting people with three stacks? And not just instantly, as soon as you hit three using W. That's the big change. Because like, you never sit there and auto attack someone with three stacks. You're constantly like hitting this someone to three stacks and instantly using your W. Uh, at least most of the time. If, you know, 95% of the time, that's what you're doing. Um, and that, you know, gets rid of all the stacks and you have to go it all, like, put it all up again. So overall, he's going to be doing less damage. Um, especially because uh, it's, it no longer can be 6% like it was at rank 3 of his ult. Uh, this is going to be a buff, of course, pre-6 because you don't get percentage before that, but it's a very, very small buff. 
Um, I'd say this change makes him weaker than the percentage on his ult. They compensate with increased damage on his Q, which not really a big deal. His Q is pretty meaningless. Uh, at least, or his Q isn't meaningless. The Q damage increase is pretty meaningless. Like five, you know, rank two. You do max Q first. Twenty is, it's it's nice. You know, it's a small little buff. It's not going to make him that much better though. Um, a bigger change is to his thick skin. Um, now that they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to incentivize you using the E in fights and skirmishes uh, Because a lot of the times when you're playing Kench, you're, use, you're just saving your E You're not using it unless it's to bait something out or it's like to keep you alive You're never using it as a small shield in skirmishes Because you either want to save it to heal you after a fight Or you're going to be using it to keep yourself alive like when you're almost dead um, I think this is a healthy change. I don't know if it's a strong change, but it's probably the smarter decision on Riot's part because now it's 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 less just of a baiting game and more of who can use the shield at the right time to maximize the value of either would you heal this up or would you you know absorb enough damage. Um, I'd like it if the shield duration was four seconds as opposed to three because three is kind of short uh, for. The amount of you know resources you take using it and by resources i mean like you're not going to heal back and uh sometimes they can just ignore you for those three seconds uh a really good buff this is a pure buff besides the passive change um channel duration doesn't matter cast delay by 0.75 seconds that's huge that's making it so the enemy team will have a lot less time to react to your ultimate, uh, especially it's especially strong if you're carrying a teammate with you. Um, uh, this is a really strong change. This is like I don't know how comparable it is to Twisted Fate Ultimate, but I, I can guarantee that you're going to be getting a lot more picks and catches with this change. Uh, they get less warning and you cast it quicker, so definitely a strong change here. And the range increase. It's already an enormous ultimate at rank 3. It's going to be even bigger. It's pretty crazy. I'd say his ult is a lot better if you know how to use it. Uh, it's a big thing about Kench is um, a strength that I don't see a lot of people use when they play Kench in any role really is his ultimate. Using it to flank, using it to pick. Um, with this change you'll probably see that happen more. Uh, thresh change doesn't really matter. It's basically the same thing. Um, it'll, it'll be about the same thing. <clears throat> Zyra nurse, she needed this, uh, just on her seeds, like, that's a pretty important part because, especially in lane, the plants can be a pretty big lane bully, and, you know, obviously the plants are probably the most annoying part about Zyra because they take three hits to kill, and they're constantly out, so, with the cooldown increase on those, hopefully she'll be less of a piece of shit in lane, and... She maxes W last, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. I don't play Zyra, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think she'll still be good, though. But this is at least a start. Uh, Zillion change. Just bug fix. <coughs> Nar buffs. These are all buffs. Very small buffs, though. I think that's good that they're starting with small buffs because he is on the verge of being viable. Right now, he's, like, okay and he's sometimes all right to pick in competitive. Uh, this change doesn't do much, like increased range at level 18. Uh, it really doesn't mean much since you don't use Nar for the range at that level, you use him for Mega Nar. Return boomerang distance, no one uses that, to be honest. Like, if you're gonna catch your boomerang, you're gonna catch it by moving forward. Usually you don't move backward, and usually you don't do those fancy plays where you throw a boomerang and hit someone from behind you. This is pretty meaningless. Hyper change is pretty good for lane. Nar uh, doing five extra damage on every three autos is not much, but it'll rack up. Um, Nar changes won't do much. I think he'll, unless other champions get nerfed, Nar will definitely just stay out of meta. Really, <coughs> Aurelia, like thank God they nerfed his champion. If you remember before, like way way long ago, when Riven had this kind of thing, this kind of ult where. Uh, her ult was so low cooldown where she could use it, kill you, come back to lane, and it's already up and she'll just kill you again. They're doing the same thing to Aurelia. That being said, 
Aurelia is still the worst champion design in the game. Aurelia is still broken by design, by, by her kits just broken. Uh, and she's still probably going to be good because she stacks CDR. Um, Triforce changes make her really good. I think she'll still be really strong. I still think they need to remake her or nerf her to uselessness until they, uh, you know, give her a rise treatment. Completely rework her kit. Or remove her from the game. Um, Jarvan changes. <coughs> Not solving the problem of Jarvan. Jarvan, uh, his problem isn't surviving in team fights, which is what this change does. It makes his team fight, you know, he'll be tankier, but that's not what Jarvan lacks, even though that's what they're saying. Like, Jarvan isn't about the tankiness. It's more, Jarvan doesn't have reliable CC, and especially with the cooldown increase nerfs of a long time ago on his EQ. EQ is pretty fairly easy to dodge. Um, he just does a lot of people's job worse. I'd say he's just a worse Rek'Sai, to be honest. Uh, so Jarvan's still going to be pretty mediocre. Kindred Nurse. This still is actually pretty big because this makes her really susceptible to invade. Uh, seven armor early game is a ton. And uh, people like Lee Sin or Ring... I'm not sure exactly who invades, but invade heavy junglers will definitely be picked against Kindred. Uh, base armor going down so much just means that she'll take a ton of damage from uh, autos, autos from minion or from uh, creeps, uh, the monsters, the monsters in the jungle, and uh, she'll take a ton from just if she gets invaded by the enemy jungler. Uh, she'll probably still be a good jungler because of this change right here on her W, uh, reducing their movement speed and attack speed, meaning she's just going to kite them all day long. So her jungling is going to be fine, and she's probably going to still be an okay character. Uh, the heal is kind of big, because she's not going to have a lot of sustain anymore. But her skirmish versus other junglers is going to be much, much worse. And that is a pretty big change. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that'll put her to rest, but we're just going to have to see. Swain changes, or Swain nerfs. Uh... This just makes it so that Swain can't constantly be trading and healing back up uh, trade after trade after trade. This is a good change. I don't think it's going to completely destroy Swain, but it's going to make someone who's playing Swain have to be a lot smarter about when they're going to ult. So after you see a Swain ult and then cancel, you have a uh, moment of... You just have a moment to start trading with Swain while his ultimate is down. So the Swain is going to have to play further back. Swain is going to have to play safe while his ultimate's on CD, and you can take advantage of that, and you can, you know, go for whatever play you want to go on Swain. Uh, go aggro on him when his ult's on CD now, because it's not going to be up for a while after he cancels, until he gets CDR at least. Syndra bug fixes. I mean, yeah, Syndra bug fixes. Uh, Trundle. This nerf doesn't mean a lot. He already had good health regen, but... um. And he's still going to have good health regen because of his passive. Uh, but this makes it a little bit more bearable. He's not going to completely regenerate after every single skirmish uh, slash trade you have with him. This is a good change. Trundle's still going to be good as long as tanks are still good slash fine. Or if melee champions are still viable, which they are. And Trundle's really good in the melee champions. So Trundle's still going to be good. Twitch bug fix. Or, yeah, bug fix. Vladimir change. Basically, they're uh, nerfing his tank and making his AP stronger, which is a good change. You don't want to see Vladimir build, build full tank and just shit on everyone anymore. Or at least that's the, that's the hope with the change. Um, they're incentivizing you to build it more AP uh, with the ratio on Q being increased and the passive being more built toward AP. Good change. Uh, it's a nerf to his tank, which is a nerf overall, because building pure AP is just going to make you more vulnerable. I think he's still going to be pretty good, as in, I think he'll still be ban worthy. Uh, Volibear nerfs. I don't see any Volibear in my elo, but I'm pretty sure Volibear shits on low elo, so I don't know what to say about this. Uh, jungle Volibear is good, top Volibear isn't, because his strength lies in ganks right now. Uh, I guess this kind of tones it down. You you max W anyway, so I guess at 9 he'll be about the same. Um, 
This will make his jungling a little bit weaker. <laughs> Zig's bug fix. That doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. Okay, item changes. <clears throat> Ancient coin. This will make... Uh, I, I think this will just change up the diversity in uh, support items. Usually you see even the passive supports, they go the AP item. But I think this will make people like Soraka and Janna... Um, Characters of those sorts, probably not Sona or Karma. Uh, they'll go with this item. CDR is good on those characters. The armor at the end is good as on the on those characters. Uh, it's hard to say because I'm not a support player, but at least there will be more of a diversity. I think there definitely will. Um, this doesn't really matter. It's just execution. Uh, Forbidden Idol. They're changing a lot of items with this. I think. This item, uh, the change on this, 10 plus bonus healing and shielding power, you'll be seeing Soraka's, Janna's, Lulu's, you'll be, Sona's, all of these support champions are going to start building this item. 15 plus bonus is pretty huge, along with bonus, eight, like more AP now, that's just a very big change, and uh, I, I think every single healing support and shielding support should be getting this. This is a really big change, and I think... I don't really like it since I don't like those kind of passive supports, but <clears throat> but it definitely buffs them. Um, probably worth uh, looking into those kind of supports now on this patch. Uh, getting these items probably as your third item, because Aegis of the Aegis of Legion is still definitely the best support item. You'll go your warding item, you'll go Aegis, and then you'll go one of these. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, with these being buffed, or at least with Mikhail's being buffed, and with Aegis being so strong, Ruby Sightstone is going to be more of a uh, uh, an incentive to build because cooldown reduction is coming up. 20% uh, is a lot more than 10%. It'll be worth. Uh, it'll be worth to build this, I think, if you're doing a lot of active items. Um, spell is going to longer you cast during Proto Belt Dash. Uh, I guess that's a nerf to like Annie or something. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, wards giving experience. Uh, that's you know that's good for support slash people who take uh, the sweeper. It's just a meteor. It's just a small change. I can't say this will affect the game that much. Uh, catch up experience. This is pretty big. Uh, thing about catch up experience is that. When you killed someone in lane solo, which God forbid that happens because, you know, that swings the game a, a ton, but they're making it so, um, hold on, actually, I know this, this is what I was talking about, the early kill rewards, um, I'll get to that in a second. <coughs> um, catch up experience, now skills continuously percent missing level rather than their main set value, you now get more catch up experience at 2.5 levels behind. So, I think they're making it so that um, you now get more catch-up experience at 2.5 levels behind than 2.3. Okay, so they're making it easier to catch up if you're that far behind, which is... It just scales, basically. It's no longer a flat amount. So, good change. If you're too far behind, if you're really getting shit on that hard, you're probably going to lose anyway, but I guess this makes it so comebacks are easier. Um, but usually a team that's that far ahead where people are three levels ahead, you're just going to shit on them anyway. Post-death experience, this is good. I like this change. <clears throat> because you can go one for one in a lane. Uh, you kill them, and then they kill you. Or they kill you, and then you kill them. But it'll be worth it for them because you were dead and you weren't able to get the uh, experience. So now you'll be able to trade one for one, and regardless of who dies uh, second, or regardless of who dies first, um, you're both still going to get the experience, which means it'll be an even trade. And that's pretty big because now one for ones won't be that huge of a, of a deal. Um, and I like that because one for ones are basically pointless. Um, your goal should be to kill them and get out yourself. <clears throat> Early kill rewards. I like this change because a lot of the times if you got killed, uh, especially bot lane, um, they'll be so far ahead in experience that you're just going to lose the entire lane phase. So they're going to tone it down. 
like you're still going to get an advantage for killing them, but it's not going to be so big that the entire game is lost off it. I like this change, uh, it should be less punishing if you happen to fuck up in the early game and die. Um, and hopefully the game won't spiral out of control if your team fucks up early. <coughs> Teleport changes, uh, this is pretty big. One second more is kind of annoying for any teleport taker. I think this is a good change because teleport's kind of cancer when people start, when mid laners, top laners, and start, you know, it's just meta on four people in the game. Uh, both mid laners and both top laners start taking teleport. That's when it starts getting cancer. Uh, I think this will make mid lane summoners like Ignite, Cleanse, Ghost, Barrier, Heal be more meta. Top lanes are going to have to take TP regardless of how much they nerf it because top lane the way they impact the game is with TP. So uh, I think this will, it'll stay meta on top lane. It'll probably be a big nerf to mid lane TPs. You probably still take TP on like Twisted Fate and Lissandra, Lulu, those kind of champions, but more aggro characters, you definitely want to take something else. Um, Dragon Star on the level up. You know, if that ever happened to you, then I guess, yay, they fixed it. Uh, ranked emblems, you can now see who's boosted and all that. Uh, ranked tier restrictions, rank fives, bug fixes, okay. So that's basically it, all the important changes. Uh, that's about it for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and if you want to see more in big patches, just let me know.